Patrick saw something that Juno did while out at Jupiter that was a little unusual. Patrick, what's Juno done now besides beautiful pictures? Well, um, Juno may have solved something with this uh, image, uh, which is the zodiacal light. The zodiacal light has, has seen only long after sunset, and it's a list lingering twilight, or what people have called false dawn or, or even false uh, dusk. It's a cone of light that stretches from the horizon and, um, and goes up along the uh, constellations of the zodiac. Astronomers have debated uh, what is the cause of this light that they see in the, in the evening sky or the, even in the morning sky. And uh, what they think uh, they think it is, and it's hotly debated, is perhaps it's uh, dust from asteroids that have collided long ago, or even dust from comets that have been shed in the solar system. But uh, recently, as we mentioned, uh, Juno uh, made an interesting discovery uh, Juno was launched in uh, 2011, and as it circled away from the Earth, it made a deep space maneuver outside orbit of Mars, and then uh, that deep space maneuver took it back towards the Earth for a flyby and a gravity assist from the Earth, and then along to uh, Jupiter in 2016. Now, this is interesting because during that time, when it was uh, moving um, in between the orbits of Mars and, and, and Earth, uh, the Juno spacecraft um, solar panels were hit by microscopic dust particles. And these dust particles uh, were hitting the uh, solar panels at roughly about 10,000 miles per hour. Uh, they were actually observed by the star tracker instruments. Uh, here we see an image uh, with three reference stars that are used to orientate the uh, Juno spacecraft. But the object in the red circle is actually debris that was dislodged by the uh, impacts of the dust. Now from the instruments on Juno, investigators were able to make a map of the distribution of the dust um, uh, uh, that uh, Juno had encountered. And they found something very interesting. They found that the dust, uh, is actually centered around the orbit of Mars and is densest, uh, closest to the orbit of Mars, suggesting that Mars could be the source of the interplanetary dust that uh, causes a zodiacal light. Now we know that Mars has dust storms and uh, when it's calm, you can see most of the surface of Mars as you can see in this image uh, taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. But at right, um, when a dust storm rages, it can, cover the entire planet uh, with dust and then markings will be very difficult to see. So in effect, um, the dust particles uh, that cause the zodiacal light have been traced back to the planet Mars. The question the scientists have now have to answer is how can the dust leave the gravitational field of Mars and go out into space and produce these uh, beautiful zodiacal lights we, that we can see in, uh, in the evenings, uh, especially in March here in Northern Hemisphere, and, and also in the mornings in, the, um, in November, in the autumn. So Patrick, are spacecraft going to have to worry about this zodiacal dust when traveling to Mars and beyond for future missions? That's an excellent question. Uh, in fact, uh, the distribution of dust that's been mapped out uh, by Juno actually provides a way of um, knowing where the dust is densest. And so for future spacecraft going, traveling out from, um, from the Earth, uh, past Mars and onto Jupiter or even beyond, uh, they will know how to uh, craft an orbit that will avoid the densest uh, distributions of the dust. And mainly it's around the orbit of Mars. Wow, super, super fascinating. Um, we'll wait to see more about how they use this information. Now, Juno, as we all know, uh, is we're used to seeing beautiful images of Jupiter's atmosphere and clouds, kind of like these ones you see here. But Juno, in this case, showed us the zodiacal light, um, so something different. And also recently, an observatory on Earth told us something about Jupiter's wind speeds in those clouds we're seeing pictures of. Patrick, what was that all about? And what Earth observatory is making these observations of Jupiter? Okay, well, this is a very interesting story involving uh, Jupiter's upper winds. 
Um, normally, we can estimate the speed of the winds just by looking at the visible clouds and, and seeing a movement across Jupiter. How do you estimate the speeds of winds that are not visible, that are above Jupiter's clouds? So that was an interesting project for scientists to uh, figure out. So um, what they did was uh, they used ALMA, which is the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array, this is basically a collection of uh, 66 uh, radio telescopes. They actually used 44 of them, aimed it at the planet Jupiter. And they were looking for a particular molecule in, uh, in Jupiter's atmosphere that's uncommon to uh, basically uh, Jupiter's uh, atmosphere itself. Um, it's a molecule uh, that was left over from the uh, Shoemaker-Levy 9 impact back in 1994. This was a comet that slammed it into Jupiter and left some um, markings on Jupiter that were visible even from moderately sized telescopes here on Earth. What they were looking for in Jupiter's atmosphere is a molecule called hydrogen cyanide, which is uh, present in comets. And this was still in the atmosphere of Jupiter. And what they wanted to do was to find uh, how fast these molecules were traveling above the uh, cloud tops of uh, Jupiter. And they got a measurement and it only took them about 30 minutes of observation. They found that uh, the wind speeds of above Jupiter's cloud tops was 900 miles an hour at the polar regions, which was a very surprising finding. The predictions was that the wind speeds decreased in the stratosphere. And what the scientists found out was it was quite the opposite. They uh, swirl around in a vortex, which is roughly about four times the Earth's diameter. This is a huge uh, jet stream uh, that's swirling around the north and south pole of Jupiter. And uh, it's a very surprising finding for them. Well, it's always great to see observatories from different aspects, Juno at Jupiter and ground-based ALMA used kind of in conjunction to figure out what's going on at Jupiter. This is the modern era of research using everything we can get our hands on.